The edge of this chalice RTN last night and it's brown jelly. What we have here is about 10,000 philaster parasites that have caused the RTN of this chalice. It turned into brown jelly. And this is what you're not seeing when you look at your RTN in coral, because you cannot see these with your naked eye. They must be seen with a microscope. But it's as easy as putting it on a microscope stand and looking at the coral with a illumination source from above and you will literally see tens of thousands of parasites. Now we're going to zoom in to um, 100x because we were at 40 and let's see what there is. I hope you can all see these the Laster parasites, these are the RTN parasites that I've been publishing about now for the last several months. And there are literally thousands and thousands. So I'm gonna take this coral. And I'm gonna put it in a little cup of water and we're gonna keep it overnight and we'll look at it again tomorrow. So I've got a small amount of tank water in a pea cup, and we're gonna take this, put it in here. This is what I recommend everybody do with an RTNing branch of coral or piece of coral. Remember, this is a chalice, and we're gonna set it overnight, and tomorrow we'll take a look at it again. But for those of you who are saying the RTN parasites, the microorganisms I've been talking about, these are protozoans that are ciliated, namely Philaster lucinda, Philaster guamis, for those who are saying, no, they don't cause RTN, all you have to do is get a microscope and look at RTN and coral and you will see them. Put the piece of coral overnight in a little bit of water and you will see them in the morning by the thousands. It is 100% every single time there's RTN, you will see these parasites. And if you take them and isolate them, which I have done in my experiments earlier last year, you will be able to inoculate healthy corals with the the philaster, they will infect the healthy corals, they will cause RTN and STN. The corals will then have philaster in them growing like crazy and you can re-isolate them. That's what I've done in my experiments for the first time ever in the history uh, of reef keeping and coral and marine sciences. For some reason there seem to be people who just can't get this very simple concept. 